All right. Rohit, I would love to get your perspective, but can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your organization, GenPact, before we go there? Sure. So GenPact is a professional services organization that specializes in digital transformation, consulting, and business process outsourcing. We have 100,000 plus employees spread across in 30 countries, serving clients in different sectors, including banking and financial, healthcare, consumer goods, and manufacturing. I lead the security engineering product and application security at GenPact, and we have been a Zscaler customer for a little over five years now, and it's been a great partnership. Thank you. And uh, Thomas, I have one specific question for you. I call you Mr. Zero Trust internally, but oh. uh, tell us a little bit about Takeda and your, your role within Takeda as well. Sure. So I'm Thomas Likas. Um, I'm the enterprise architect for security at Takeda. Among my many activities, uh, I'm very much involved in Zero Trust, yes, uh, as part of a larger transformational theme and activity. Uh, transformation is very important for Takeda. As you can see, we're quite old as a company. We were founded over 200, 240 years ago. Um, we're a Japanese company, but with a true, true global footprint, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we have over 170 sites, I think, all around the world. Uh, 50,000, 52,000 employees by now, 20,000 external, almost 70,000 users in total. Um, we've been growing with uh, we acquisitions and mergers in the past a lot which, as you can imagine, brings a lot of technical challenges, a lot of complexity. And uh, that's why we partnered up with Zscaler to help mm -hmm. us solve some, some of these and help us transform truly as a company. All right, Roy, you, you and I have talked about, like, you run security operations and you work with ZI and ZPA both. So from your perspective, something like packet captures, which is, uh, you know, important in a SOC playbook, how do you see that fitting in your overall playbook with the, what we are rolling out? So packet capture will help us to solve four tactical operational challenges. To start with, first is network traffic analysis. Using packet capture, a SOC analyst can near real time perform the traffic analysis or conduct any retrospective analysis. This will help him uncover any malicious activities, such as unauthorized access, any lateral movements, command and control communications, or data exfiltration. Second, it's going to help with malware analysis. A SOC analyst could use a packet capture to perform the malware analysis. It'll help him to understand the behavior of the malware, understand the origin of the malware, and how it interacts with the system. Third, it helps with threat hunting. Packet capture helps us to uncover known and unknown security threats, and helps us to identify a potential indicator of compromise that has not been identified by any other security technologies. Lastly, it helps with forensic investigations. Packet capture is a critical piece of evidence in forensic investigations. It helps us to create a series of actions that an attacker has performed, and it's a critical evidence in any legal proceedings. Mm -hmm. uh, Thomas, question for you, right? You have been an early design partner, customer for us, ZPA. We validate a lot of ideas with you. You were one of the customers who started on the segmentation journey early on. Uh, we Walk us through a little bit about how do you approach segmentation now with so much automation we are bringing out segmentation. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? So zero trust is a journey. Mm -hmm. It's not a technology you can buy. It's not a button you can push. Um, you guys made it very easy spinning up ZPA, deploying it. I was actually joking with somebody this morning how about uh, how I stood it up at Takeda pretty much by myself. Not an exaggeration. It's easy. But it's just the first step. Going from a, a model where everything is accessible, just because user and application happen to be on the same network, on the same side of the firewall, to a model where everything is accessible just because there's an access policy that matches the user and the destination, mm -hmm. explicitly defining this destination. It's technically <coughs> doable in ZPA. However, it's a little bit of an operational challenge at times. Very simply, we're a large company. We have thousands upon thousands of applications. And we're not really good at documenting them. I'm not sure if that's a Takeda problem only. Um, however, I also feel like uh, as security and network practitioners, we're not always very close to the applications. We don't understand the application architecture very often and how our users are accessing it, right? Um, so these innovations that you just presented, they will help tremendously. On one side, the import from the CMDB, which we can talk about how to operationalize that. Maybe it's a one-time thing or a regular cadence. Um, maybe more importantly in my head, though, the machine learning that we introduced the grouping and the contextual information that is presented by ZPA will allow tremendously to speed up the, the rate at which we can segment applications properly. 
right? Take away some of the operational burdens. Mm -hmm. Maybe it won't solve the problem completely, but it will help us push us further into this journey. Cool. That's very cool. Deepin, you had something to add. Yeah, no, I, I think segmentation, like I, I've been repeating myself probably third time, <laughs> very, very critical. I mean, everyone starts with journey from moving from VPN to ZPA, for instance, in our case. Now with this automation, you are also able to quickly go from start or start policy to having meaningful segmentation implemented, protecting your crown jewel. So start with your crown jewel, make sure you have these things implemented and reduce your internal attack surface. Okay. So my last question, by right, for all the panelists here, right? You know, identity is a key pillar on zero trust. Uh, Deepin, we know that a lot of identity attack, I mean, attacks on Active Directory lead to ransomware attacks. So you have seen specific examples. Rohit, we have talked about how you look at the identity threat detection response space. So why don't you give us some uh, insights into how you have approached ITDR within GenPact? Sure. So most of the cyber attacks, recent cyber attacks, if you look at it, identity takes the center stage. Therefore, in my view, I think three things are extremely critical. Bring stronger focus on basics, which is logging. Perform, perform background verification for your privileged users. Perform account re reconciliation. And establishing identity baseline is extremely critical. Second is configuration management. Like Deepin mentioned, AD is one of the crown jewels for any organization. Maintain AD hygiene by monitoring for riskier configurations. Example, constraint delegation, GPB password exposure, or look for vulnerable certificates within your environment. Third, stop, pass the hash, golden ticket, and Kerberos roasting attacks. Some of these are very hard to detect, but can be solved by applying simple mitigations like increasing password complexity. Create a choke point by restricting access to your domain controllers from your bastion host or your privileged access management system. Monitor for your service accounts. And lastly, disable legacy protocols like NTLM. Yeah. Okay. Great. So Thomas, parting words for this audience. We have a mix of customers who are on segmentation journey, who are starting with their segmentation journey. Mm -hmm. So how would you recommend to our customers and partners, how do, should they start with their, how should they approach segmentation on day zero? Day zero, with the new features, go talk to your SimDB folks first and <laughs> let them uh, give you a list. Um, maybe beyond that, start with broadly, start broadly. <laughs> start with maybe a wildcard even. Wildcard sounds bad, right? And it's maybe not perfect, it's not a granular access. But if you think about what uh, your uh, exposure was before with VPN, where simply everything is accessible, to go to a wildcard where maybe everything that's just whatever, star.acme.com, whatever your domain is, is accessible, it's a huge reduction in your uh, attack surface already. Right. Because nobody will just attack you randomly, they would have to attack you specifically, right, with your domain. And then work from there, right? Uh, look at the data your CPA is giving you, what are the applications that your users are accessing most frequently, how they're accessing them, from where, and start uh, going down the list effectively, go to the, to the smaller applications, to the more specific ones, um, and listen to your users.